Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. You made it through another week. Congratulations. We're closing out the end of the month here. January went fast, didn't it? Anyway, a uh, couple things to talk about today. Uh, first of all, I'm doing a project you rarely see me do. Let's get right into it. Okay, for today's project, uh, I know I never tackled one of these before, but I was looking through the box and I said, you know something, I, I eventually you got to combat your fears. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Now, uh, th these are what we call putty knives. And in New York, we call them putty with a D. The actual name is putty with a T, but, you know, we, we try and do away with the T's here in New York. So these are putty knives. And uh, what we do is, well, there's different ones, obviously. They're, they can be called scrapers. They be all different types. There's hundreds of these. But what's always interesting about them is, first of all, the handle designs. If you notice, some of the handles are really nicely done. Like these here, the zip strip. Now, this is a very lightweight one, but that's a very comfortable handle, you know, and, and a lot of times uh, very nice in the hand. But uh, And then you had the more ornate, the older ones here, like this one here. It's probably the, probably like a rosewood with brass rivets. Really nice one, but look at what they did to that blade. Huh? That's a sin. So, uh, and then you have the heavy-duty ones, you know, obviously how thick these are. These have no flex in them whatsoever. These are more meant for scraping, and you can do it. But if anybody that's done windows or anything, if you're putting caulking in or anything, you want a lot of flex to the blade for certain jobs. And that's why um, this was one of the first ones I bought, actually, as a kid. Actually, one just like this. This isn't it. But uh, I remember buying this all the way, and I remember the blade. Look at that flex in there. That's such a nice flex on that blade. So when you're putting putty down or something, you know, you put your finger on top, and you can get, and everybody knows what I'm talking about now who's ever used one of these. Really nice. But if you, uh, and then they have ones that are in between, you know, not quite as much flex, a little more stiff. So depending on the job you're going to do, you know, the first thing you're going to do when you go in there is you're going to feel the blade. You know, obviously you wouldn't want this for doing some kind of window work or putting spackle on the wall because it just makes it that much harder. You need something with some good flex. And the funny thing is, some of these blades, you could tell by the use of them, were used more than others. You know, everybody had their favorite. Some had that nice corner. See that light, nice radius on that corner? Some had, you know, sharper corners. So that everybody had their own preferences. My father loved putty knives. So I thought, thought we would tackle one today. Uh, I'm going to see this one here. Now, here's the a problem we always have with the blades because they're such a high carbon steel blade you're always going to have staining staining is very hard to get out because we can't really go below you know look how thin that is how much can you take off so that's always a problem so that's why if you're thinking of doing a putty knife you gotta set your expectations very low because the handles come out nice but the blade will always have stains and it always throws off your restoration so let's see what we can now, do now the first this. thing i'm going to want to do is scrape off whatever that is on that blade it looks like some kind of i don't know it's like a tar or something we're gonna have to try and get that off and you know you want to use a razor blade for that now there are different razor blade holders remember these old type here uh this one here is made in the usa but it was still a light duty scraper. This is meant for getting like paint off the window or something. It's, it's, these are never really that good, you know? So you move up to a little better one, a little better quality one. This one here has a better locking device here. Again, made in the USA. Again, not the best, but then I remember when I was, you know, back as a kid, I remember buying this because I said this one here is something that you when you want to do your inspections you know stickers on the car or something you got to get into the windshield you can have a long reach and i so i bought this thing and it was good and, and everything but then uh, you know it always it gave you a little bit of issues you know but then i got this this is the cat's pajamas right here isn't that pretty and here you got extra blades you could put in a handle Look at that. That's just a, a work of art. And this is what you use to get your inspection sticker off on your windshield or something like that. You break down after a while and you get yourself the tool for the job. So we'll start scraping this off, see what we can do. You know, there are some jobs that are just very satisfying to do, and this is one of them. You know, especially if you have a nice cast iron surface here, like we we're using the table saw. You know, it keeps the blade nice and stiff. And then when you take your 
you scrape it here if you just work it gently like this you can get off and you know even though there's a lot of gook on the blade sometimes that actually protects the blade rather than moisture and scraping it up and you could see already how this is just like one of those satisfying jobs you know it's like uh <laughs> You know, you don't get too many of those in, in the shop when you, you really enjoy a, a, a actual job that you're doing, you know, a, one of the steps. But here we go. That Whatever that tar was, it actually helped to protect the blade a little bit. Well, we have some staining, so we'll finish that up. Now here's where I think a lot of tool cleanups fall short because you see these pits here and everything and this is where you say, well, it's kind of thin. I don't want to go any further. You have to keep going. You know, if you stop now, it's just going to uh, totally destroy the rest of it. It's going to look horrible. Just keep going. It's, it's, you'll see. It'll come out good. Keep going. Now, if you're like me and you love your birds in the spring and in the summertime, you can't uh, neglect them now. It's important during the winter and cold months that you give them food and water so that this way, when the spring and summer comes again, you have their company once again. Okay, we got some real cold weather coming up for the next couple days. And what's really important is you can't forget your little furred and feathered friends. As it is important that they get uh, some seed, it's also important that to give them some water. So what I do is I knock out the ice over here, put down some fresh water, and uh, they need some water. So a couple times a day I come out here. Now, and even if you can only use one of these, here we have a frozen solid. But what you do is you turn it upside down. You take a little bit of uh, just warm water like this and just put it over there, and this will pop right out of here. You see? Now your ice block pops out of there and you could put fresh water in here. And do that a couple times a day for the birds. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what this old putty knife looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Wow, look at that, huh? It's like a 100 mile an hour knife now. Look at it. Let's take a good look at what we got going here, okay? Remember what that blade looked like before? I couldn't get every single pit out, but oh, jeez, does that look decent. And look at this. Look at the brass and the rosewood. I believe this is like a rosewood. Polished it all out. Uh, isn't that a pretty knife now? Look at that. Isn't that something you would just love to have in your pocket when you go on a job site or something? We did the back up and everything. It's just, and I know, it's still, still stiff. Still uh, enough metal here that it's a functional knife, but, you know, I really, uh, really took it down. I mean, it's still micro pitch, you could see, but, you know, it's definitely, definitely a nice one, huh? Now, isn't it something when you used to go into stores and they had, I mean, look at these brass rivets. Imagine going into stores, you know, it's what a difference between, <laughs> between this. this. I mean, come on, what, what, what happened? What happened to us? Where did we... <laughs> Where did we go off the tracks? You know what I mean? I mean, this is, uh, uh, that's why I think I was born 50 years too late. Look at that. It's just a pretty knife. Out. Okay, in closing, I know it was kind of a quick one today, but I'm, uh, I got to get back to working on that box. I, you know, I don't have a lot of time in between the days and making other videos, so I'm really uh, pushing on this one. And uh, I hope you have a great weekend. I hope it's uh, it's a lot of fun for you and do something you enjoy and get down the shop. Thanks very much for tuning in. Take care now. Bye-bye.